Hey there, folks. Sorry. Um, sorry about our fuzzy camera on the on part one of today's live stream. Um, so if you're just joining us, um, we started the stream a little bit ago and had a lot of our bigger updates. Well, we don't have really big updates, but we um, we spent like we spent like 45 minutes talking about things going on and um, we talked about some happy, feel good, heartwarming stories involving dogs and quails <laughs> um, and some kitty cats. Happy hound headlines. Yes, happy hound headlines is what we called it. Triple H. Um, but um, the only like, big news that I just wanted to make sure that families were aware of when they checked the live stream is that we're adjusting Myra's due date. Um, I made an error in the calendar and also a little bit in my math. And so we're going to back it up by six days. So um, we did have her, I'm sorry, by five days. We had her as March 16th and we are changing it to March 21st. So um, that. I hope, um, I hope isn't too disappointing for anybody. Um, five days I know is gonna be a long time once we get closer to our due date and March 16th comes and goes, everybody's gonna be wishing that March 16th issue is actually this is good. Let's get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah. But um, it sounds more right too when March 16th just seemed a little too soon. Um, her belly is growing pretty quickly and it's nice and firm um but she's still she's got probably a good week and a half till she because it's starting to widen but like it goes through these phases before it really drops and gets big she's, and she's not quite there yet hey you know what missy doing this as gross as it is it keeps us from needing to put diapers that on is, the dogs that is very true. and diapering the dogs is difficult yeah. um if we can even get them to keep them on yeah. but they usually end up tearing them off and eating them especially with having all these dogs somebody else comes up from behind them and just like, yanks right. it off um especially if it's filled with um secretions from their lady bits the dogs you know if you've ever seen if you've ever caught your dog with your underwear just imagine it being a dog's underwear so <laughs> Uh, um, it just kind of makes a bigger mess to do doggy diapers. So we, that's why you don't see us do doggy diapers too. Um, we've been asked that before, how we handle that sort of stuff. And we've never really, we've never really needed it. Um, because obviously they, you know, each, each dog is a little bit different, sorry. Each dog is a little bit different, but, um, generally speaking, they aren't bleeding that much when it's heat. And it's you no, know, it's no amount that they can't um, be hygienic about. Dogs, you know, they lick themselves, keep themselves clean, and when they're in heat, they tend to do themselves more frequently. Or like Robin, you just sit back, relax, and hold your leg up a little higher, and Missy will take care of it for you. Um, which is kind of funny because all the dogs are getting lazier and lazier about cleaning themselves since Missy just comes over and does it. I know. Yeah. I she, know. She's still going there, Robin. <laughs> um, but we, the last like six months or so, we've had families asking us what our 2024 litters are going to look like. Um, and so I'm, I apologize if you're hearing this for like the umpteenth time. But um, now that everybody has had their, um, everybody's finished with their on break cycles except for Daisy um, and so now we have a better time frame for everyone's next litters and so um, um, and so following Lyra Pom Pom will probably be bred she'll probably be mated with Macchiato right around when Myra's puppies are um, maybe like four-ish weeks old and later so um, her puppies will probably be going home around when my or when, around when Pom is getting pregnant, um, and then Missy will probably be ready to mate um, during Pom's pregnancy. And so Pom and Missy's puppies will be like end of summer puppies. Um, uh, and then 
pretty much immediately following Missy is going to be Remy and Robin. Remy most likely first because she went into heat before Robin. But, I mean, Daisy's heat cycles are only three months long. So, um, you know, if Remy has five, a five-month cycle and Robin has a six-month cycle, that'll just, you know, it'll flip-flop them. So we just have a general idea. But um, the general, general, Remy, Remy, <laughs> generally speaking, um, Generally speaking, Tom will be Tom will be next, and um, Missy, and then and then Remy and Robin, and maybe Daisy at the end of the year. We'll see. We'll see. You're a good girl, Remy dog. You are such a good girl. Um, but so this stream that we have now, the dogs in the kitchen here, um, we're usually streaming the puppies and. Um, since we don't have any puppies right now, we're streaming the moms, and um, the focus of the stream will shift to Myra more as her pregnancy progresses because she's four weeks in a day right now, and so she's got four more weeks to go. Um, and so as her belly starts getting bigger and we've got more updates to give, um, when she's seven weeks, and oh, that might be why I got that date wrong. When she's seven weeks, that's when we'll begin getting her rectal temperatures. Um, because it doesn't happen with every dog, and it's not always accurate. But when it is accurate, it's a very helpful information. Um, but about eight to 12 hours before the first delivery of the first puppy, um, their temperature will drop about two degrees. And so about a week before their due dates, we start getting their temperatures um, in the morning and at night because. Um, for one, we want a baseline. We want to see how what her temperature runs about um, before we, so that we know when she's dropped two degrees. Um, Daisy's baseline is right about a hundred degrees even, which is kind of on the line of that drop. And so that's why we want a baseline um, because one hundred one point five is a more standard um, temperature for a pregnant mama dog, um, but that two degrees is still kind of small, so you want to know when where their baseline is. But um, so when she's about seven weeks, so in three more weeks, we'll begin rectal temperatures every morning and every night, and we'll update the live stream. Um, there won't be many updates to give on those first couple of days of temps because that's just for baseline. But um, as the week progresses, as we get closer to our due date, we'll be able to discern more information from that. Um, and some dogs, and I think Myra may have been one of them, <clears throat> where we take her temperature and it's been up. It's been like 101.5, 101.8, 102, 101, 101.3. And then we'll take her temperature one evening and it'll suddenly be 98.1. And that's when we know that is a drop. Her puppies are coming and they're coming soon. Um, and so, hi, sweet love. Oh, you're such a good girl. You want some loves? Um, and so, We'll be able to update the live stream. We'll be able to update you guys um, where she's at, and we will get the the, the camera set up. We'll put the, the camera for the stream in a little inconspicuous spot um, so that she's not so it's not intrusive to her, um, but enough so that you guys can see. Um, not so close that it's gory. Um, they don't. There's not like a lot of bleeding. It's not usually like a very messy thing. There's not a lot of bleeding, just more than anything, it's more just like um, amniotic fluid that comes out of the sacs, but there's not usually anything gross to see. Um, it's not very graphic, even, you know, as the puppies are being delivered, usually the mom's kind of like hunched a little bit. And so it's um, not anything really graphic. Um, and even the moms are usually pretty calm. And there is something so sweet when that first puppy, when she's been in labor and she's in the contractions and she doesn't quite understand what's going on yet. I mean, she knows what's going on, but she doesn't realize that there's a puppy that's at the end of the rainbow here. And um, when she finally finishes pushing out what she feels like is a poop, um, and then she turns and sees that puppy. She's so happy. And it is just, it is, it's as happy as like a birth of a baby, like a just like human baby to see 
her instincts kick in and her love for her little puppy and her puppy, um, you know, crawling over to see mama. Oh, it is, it's so heartwarming. But um, we don't usually stream first deliveries just because with the first time mom, sometimes there can be more hiccups than usual. And, um, and I think probably with this, the start of this delivery stream, we'll probably um, let everybody know a few things. You know, one thing that's pretty normal is um, it's normal to have abnormal things happen, if that makes sense. Probably a better way to put it would be um, it's, it's, it's normal to have hiccups. It's normal to need to, it's common. Um, things don't always go as textbook. Sometimes you and I will have to look something up. Sometimes we'll have to make a call to our vet just to make sure we're on the right track or to see if there's something we can do in the meantime. Um, you know, sometimes we wanna just make sure that not too much time has passed. Um, and so we've got a really awesome vet. He's, um, we live out in the country. And so he's really familiar with, um, with animals who are out on farms, who are kind of far away, or not, we're not too far away, but um, we're far away to have this many animals get seen. And so like, he does house calls. Um, He's a really good vet. He answers well, he answers his phone like day or night, especially if you know so he's got a mama dog or another animal um, that's um, in labor because he knows their due dates. But um, we also like to let him know when she's actually having puppies, so that um, if we're pushing for him, you know he knows that mom's in labor. Um, yes, you guys are good dogs. really excited to have puppies again. We've got um, a lot of really great families that have reached out to us that I'm really excited to get to know. Um, we've got a lot of our families that have reached out to us um, are specifically looking for ESAs. It's usually about half and half, like half ESAs, half family pet um, that they're looking for. And um, I think almost all of Myra's puppies might be ESA puppies ending on reservation day. Hey. Oh, Bella's phone? Yeah. It was in the car? Yeah. Yeah. But we raise all of our puppies as ESAs. Um, it's, a, it's a lot easier when we have our different little like activities that we do with them. Um, it's a lot easier to just raise the whole litter in, in that way. And so we raise all of our puppies to be ESAs. And what that means is we pay a lot of attention and a lot of focus on um, nurturing the traits that make Cavaliers so loving and affectionate. Um, because an organism is the product of the environment they grow up in. They're the product of stimuli. They're the product of um, things that have happened around them that have all shaped the creature that they become as an adult and as their brains are developing. And so what we do is we try to go overboard on the snuggles and the cuddles and the love. And we will, um, usually we'll each have like one puppy that we kind of focus on because what we like to do is um, teach the puppy to like, to prefer a person. Um, and to get to know one person and to begin being able to read one person. Um, because an ESA is different from a therapy dog in that therapy dogs are therapeutic for a broad spectrum of people. They're, they're meant to be more generic because they're meant to be more, um, to encompass more people, to more value. Um, whereas an ESA is for one person. And so, it's kind of like the opposite where instead of being really broad, an ESA puppy or a dog, an ESA dog, learns to focus on just one person and their needs, their quirks. Um, you know, Paris over here, we got Daisy who's mine, um, but Paris knows May like inside out. Um, May and I, we both have really bad anxiety disorders. And um, even though we both have anxiety disorders, we still react a little bit differently to things. 
And so Daisy knows me in ways that Paris wouldn't know. And Paris knows May in ways that Daisy wouldn't know. And so um, we try to raise the puppies and have them as ready for their home, their specific home as possible. So um, like one of our litters last summer, there was um, a girl, um, the puppy was going to be her ESA and she's a, she was a teenager and she had um, similar issues to May actually. And so we had May focus on that puppy since May was more representative of um, the person who was going to be, this puppy was going to be an ESA for. And so May did a lot of the, um, like socializing the, um, little, all the little activities that we do with the puppies. Um, we had May do with this particular puppy just to get her used to that teenage girl. Um, like, you know, she wasn't going to a big, um, a big muscular motorcycle Harley Davidson rider. She was going to a teenage girl who was anxious and timid. And so it was, um, it's helpful to, if we can pair the puppy with somebody who has similar sort of um, triggers. And we just noticed that that was, um, was really helpful to, to be able to match them up like that. Um, it doesn't always happen that easily, but um, it's just nice for the puppies because they, um, you know, you can have genetic, um, have genetic cues for different, you can have a disposition for all kinds of different things. And in your upbringing, you can either trigger them on or off. And so for all of our puppies, um, for any switches they have for any genetic um, predispositions they have for being affectionate and loving and caring, we want to do as much as we can that can switch all those switches on and nurture them to really fluff them up and bring them out. Um, you know, if, if you are suppressing something that they, if you're trying to suppress something that they're drawn to do, they will eventually stop doing it. Um, anything will. Kids will stop doing something that they want to do, that they feel compelled to do if, they, if it's constantly met with like negative reinforcement. And so that's why with the snuggles and the affection, we try to encourage it as much as we can so that, you know, the more that we encourage, the more they give, the more positive reinforcement they get. And then the more they give. And then, um, you know, if May has an episode um, or even if I have an episode, uh, like an anxiety attack, um, we'll pick up the puppies to help the puppies to start getting used to um, what that looks like. What does that look like? And also to help um, help them kind of help normalize it a little bit, help them to see um, what it looks like. And um, they can already start learning what helps in that situation. And it might not, it won't be specific to their family that they're going home to because it's us, but it helps get them, helps them begin learning um, because they start learning what helps. They start learning, um, you know, what actions of theirs have positive effects. You know, walking away doesn't have a positive outcome but coming up and giving kisses does have a positive outcome. And so it starts helping them learn how to handle, how to navigate an emotional episode from or for their family member. And so, you know, it won't be until they get, go home and get to know their family member until they are really understanding all the little individual quirks, you know, like the comparison I made between Daisy and Paris. Um, but that's stuff that the dog's not going to learn until they, you like you get to know your dog that well. Um, but that's also why we really encourage families, um, local families. We encourage, um, we encourage local families to come visit, um, here in our house, um, once a week, if you're able to, um, we have a lot of families that usually live within like a 30 minute distance. Um, and so we're always happy to have families over so they can come and hold their puppy. Um, we do in-person visits starting after three weeks old. Um, we want them to have their eyes open and have a couple days of adjustment first. Um, and so three weeks old for in-person visits and we try to do, um, really as many as you want. Um, 
uh, it's probably about up to once a week is about how many we can usually handle. Um, but as often as once a week, if you can, um, because then on pickup day, when you come over and you're all like packed and we're, have, we're, you know, it's the vibe of the whole house is, you know, going home, it's exciting. And so the pup, your puppy knows. And so then when you walk in the door, like they know something exciting is going on, you know, bags are being packed, um, everything's exciting. And so when the person that they've either been talking to on FaceTime, the shirts they've been smelling, that's another thing, um, when you, after you put your deposit down for your puppy, send us a t-shirt that you can separate with for six weeks. Um, so that during FaceTime calls or Zoom calls, your puppy can smell you. We, we grab your puppy in your shirt and then your puppy can see you on camera and hear your voice. But on pickup day, there's all this exciting commotion going on. When you walk through the door and your puppy sees you, hears you, smells you, they know exactly what's going on. They know that they're going home with you. and um, it's such an awesome transformation because they go from this dynamic where they're having to almost compete for attention from people and they have to share it with all their litter mates. And they go from that to having one person that gives them all of this attention and they don't have to share with any puppies. And there's usually more than one person. It's usually a family or at least a couple, um, sometimes kids and the puppies, they, they get into their family's arms and they don't even look back at us. And it's, it's such a good feeling. Um, because it's, it's, that's kind of what we were looking for back when we were looking for our puppies. And so, um, it's really nice to see families have the sort of pickup day that, that we were looking for with, with our puppies. But so it's a really, it's an exciting process and I'm really excited to get to know more of our families. Um, who somebody tooted. Uh, we've got a really awesome set of families that have been reaching out to us. Um, and so we're really excited to have puppies again and families again. Hi, sweetie. You're a good girl. And then for families who, um, you know, we just will have my Rizzler first and you know, she may have as few as four or five puppies. Um, and for families who have their hearts set on a puppy from us, um, do not worry because um, we have more litters that we'll be having. So, and um, there, Drew and I, we were trying to like pick which puppies were our favorites, like um, which mom and dad had the best puppies. And Honestly, like if you really wanted a Myra puppy and you missed out, Pom has such awesome puppies too. And then if you miss out on Pom, Missy has really awesome puppies too. Like they're all really great puppies. And so um, it's hard to, it's hard to go wrong. Yes, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you are. You're a good Vienna girl. You are, you are. You're a good girl, Tommy, too. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. What? What is this? Oh. 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 Don't you bark. Hi there, Sue. Robin, don't get too close because then it's going to go fuzzy again. No. Oh. No. No. Hi, Roseanne. I'm doing really well. Thank you. How are you? Oh, happy to hear it, Roseanne. You silly dog.
Aw, thanks, Roseanne. You're so sweet. If you have, I don't know if you've heard yet, Roseanne, um, but Myra, Myra's gonna be having puppies March 21st is her adjusted due date. I screwed up the math on the calendar a little bit. 
Yeah, I think I, I think I figured out how I screwed it up and I was marking when to start doing temperatures and then probably got distracted. And when I went back to it, I labeled it thinking I was marking a due date. Oh, Robin! Robin! Robin has got an outfit, Tom Tom. When Tom Tom does things like that, Robin wants to go and like play parent. Paris, you're such a good girl. You're so pretty. Fur on your eyeballs. That hurt. Doesn't that hurt? Tom. Paris is just laying on Robin. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Just laying on each other. Can I go get the nail trimmers and trim some nails? Yeah, let's do that. Some nail trimmers. <laughs> I love these nail trimmers. These are so awesome. They're like, they open up really wide, but they're not loose. They're like really tight and they, they stop wherever you want them to stop. Like they don't, they're just, they're that tight. They don't hang or slip. And so they do exactly what you want them to do. They don't cut too far. They don't cut too early. They are, they're perfect. They're awesome. And I didn't know there was such a thing. These are gonna be great for puppies. It's what they're really ideal for, are the little puppies. But they're also really useful for the dew claws because Mocha, Mocha's trying to get in with the boys. She's in heat, so. Um, but I also find them helpful for dew claws because traditional nail clippers can be kind of tricky to get their dew claw nails. Hi. You're a little distracting. Woo! What? Well, when you put him in his crate, he kind of squeaks. No, 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 no. Hey. No. You gotta have the spray bottle. <laughs> No. No. Um, he's limping? He was. Um, and so I took a look at like it was like one of those things where he wasn't putting any weight on it at all. Oh. And he was like licking it a whole bunch. And so I he, he like came over to me. Like, oh, was that So what was going on? It was a, yeah, like a stick oh. uh, stuck in between oh. the web, in between oh. his pads. Oh, poor Spikey. So, I poked that out. Poor Spikey, he was, he's like, oh, daddy, fix it here, yeah. daddy. Yeah, and, and he's he's like, doing, he kept coming over to me and was like, hey, please, please. So he's all better now. Yay. Uh, Rio was chasing a flock of Mocha birds. Mocha has been trying to get into the boys, see the boys. Huh? Mocha's been scratching to go see boys. Ah, uh, but she has. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is that? I bet I'm trying to flip her over to get the other side of nails. These new nail trimmers we have are Money. fantastical, yeah. And testicle. Um, but Rio was chasing a flock of birds out into the uh, into the field. Good boy. He uh, like it was funny. Like he was, from our kids. Yeah, he was in like a dead sprint. Uh, ah, my pom pom. Pom pom. Pom pom. Come here. Pom. 
Stop picking fights with Robin. Pom pom. Pom pom. pom, -pom. Uh, pom -pom. Come here. Good girl. Come on, Mom. There you go. I don't trust you because I saw what you were doing there. Mom, come here. Mom, come here. Mom, come here. Spike, you're just fine. No, I need a full body rub down. Mm, that's only a good boy. Once more. No, Mocha. You are so weird about your nails. And I don't know why, because you got raised with all the rest of your little mates. Same. Burn thing. Mocha's got these black nails, which makes trimming her nails really difficult. difficult. That's... Yeah, that's really all. That's what I do. Just remove the tip. I just know we're not getting any quicks. Do you have a stop? Um, no, I do not. Do you want to get it for Sure. Um, is it in here or is it over there? Is it in the... Um, it's probably in here. No. Stop. Stop. I feel like it might be in our bedroom. Oh, you know, I think I did take it to our bedroom because I did Daisy's nails in bed. Daisy's nails, right? Oh, oh goodness! Did Barely took anything off, and of course now it's by me bleeding all over. Is bleeding? No, I'm saying it probably. I'm just saying that's my luck. I haven't checked yet. Oh yes, it is bleeding all over. Hold on. How would it? I'm so sorry, Mocha. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hate these black nails. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I barely, I barely got any. I'm so sorry. Oh, baby. I'm so sorry. That must have hurt so bad. I'm so sorry. I hope Daddy finds it quick. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so
charge. Break from neutrons. Everybody get a nice cube.
But what I, I'm confused, Bella, why you were outside when the rest of the class was inside. Hi, Ra. Hi, Ra. Good girl. Good girl taking her prenatal vitamin.
Oh, my God. 
I was gonna I was gonna scoop you guys like <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Drew, did you take it down? What? I was figuring May was going to probably want some. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Hello, are you going to eat your ice cream? Hello. Your ice cream is going to melt. I guess I'll eat it. Grasshoppers. <laughs> oh, I'm just confused because I know there's no grasshoppers out right now. Not like she could eat any. Yeah, I found it up the car. Okay. 
Promising that I would get him to get him well. So both he and Bella were asking for ice cream. First, I saw those to make it some. Then I was like, we're both asking for it. So I was like, we'll just it tastes like salt and caramel. Ooh. Like that first taste. Mom, you like okay. my dogs? No dogs. You know what? They're probably outside. Now I see why it's always on time because they just drop the kids off and boom, come to our house. Um, I whenever I watch your year room, I wait to see if the bus um comes from the the kind of hidden road that you can't see. It's like off. Be careful with ice cream and like roll on the stickers. Of it, so. On the side of the um, right. highway. Uh -huh. Truth or scare? Uh, I'll take truth. Aww. Well, then maybe you give dad a dare. It's truth or scare. Oh, give dad a scare. Okay, give me a scare, Bella. <laughs> that, that was scary. That was scary. Scary snow, Bella. Just, just easy sips, not nothing else. Because the 
the um the bubbles that are supposed to help. Um, but um, usually when I'm watching through there, I wait to see if the bus like turning around on the highway, mm -hmm. um, taking that U turn. But over there, I was just waiting. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting about that. Where's the other rug at? Um, it's in the washer. No.
doggies. Good doggies. Come on. Come on, Missy. Missy. Come on. Good girl. Good doggies. Good doggies. Good doggies, good doggies. Good ice cube doggies.
Aaron.
No. Yeah, come on. Come on, yeah. 
Stir it up, baby. Okay. Stir, 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 stir. 
What do I do next? So what do I do? Stir it up one more time, blah, blah. Bubbling. Bella, no more, no, no more hand sanitizer. Don't hurt your hands. Yeah, I know, Bella. Put too much on. Boy, boy, boy. Set up one more time. Yeah, what do I do next? When I'm just three. Right, well, take it off. That's time to eat, so we're going to turn everything off. What do I do next? 
Serve some up there, everybody. You want my turn? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, Bradley, come eat dinner. What is it? Daisy, come on. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, 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 yeah, grab your bowl of uh, your uh, carrots and green beans. Is that one for me? You're yeah, holding? This one's, yeah, this one's for you. Bradley, come on, buddy.
Hello, doggy doodles. Oodles and oodles, doggy doodles. Please, just one more so you have lots of strength to build your fort. I can already make my fort. I know, but you only have even more super strength. It's a good dinner. Oh! 
Dimensional soldier Bradley. I have dimensional soldier. I thought you were full. That's not for me. Yes or no, Bradley? No? It's fine if you don't want to eat, Bradley. If you just want to go lay back down, that's fine. Bradley, is there anything that you want to take down? Like, some Sprite? You're not limited on your Sprite when you're sick. You can have more Sprite. Well, I have it finished together. I still have a lot left. If there's anything else that you need, let me know. Mom, can you check my plans for me? Hold on, Bella. I'm working on your cinnamon soldiers. May, if you want um the rest of their food, you can have it. It's in the toaster, Bella. It's in the toaster, and soon be out and be soldiered. Oh, dang it, I didn't realize we had caramel sauce up here. You guys could have had caramel sauce on your ice cream. May, do you want any cinnamon soldiers? Yes, please.
something. Come on, Bella, I'm finishing up your summer photos. Can I tell you? One. So, I don't fit, uh, I don't fit, uh, I don't fit, uh, I can't wear this stuff anymore. You know what? Hold on, let me finish up you your know why? soldiers over here. You know why, Mom? I do not know why. But I'm too big. Oh, old May fits over there. Oh, I see like that. Oh, uh, uh, my right, well, Hey, it's me for your stamp, but I'm going to have to get down here. Ow. 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 You're Oh. 
Um, it's really well. This is really yeah. No, I mean, it's just other than the normal, normal downhill. So the reason I did this is because
I'll go ahead. Like, go ahead, please.
What's wrong, Bella? Throw away pictures, baby. No, the pictures from Raylan she gave me. I know I didn't throw. I I remember seeing pictures, and I thought that they were from a friend, so I didn't throw them away. Not in the bag. Oh, they are. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. That was a mistake. Did you, did you pull them out? I pulled them out, and I said they were in the in the number. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. That was my mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My mistake. I want to get Maybe I'm I'm sorry, it was an accident. It was an accident. I did not know. No, no. I don't know. Her name is Oh, I didn't see her name. I'm sorry, so her name okay. was the only oh, well, why don't you go upstairs and go get them then? And put it somewhere safe. Yeah, I have to do it all by myself. Well I have to make my board all by myself. No. That you want me to play with me? Because you can get my sick blanket. Yeah. Hey. My sick blanket. Uh huh. It's pink. I'm getting it pink. Oh, yeah, it is. Do you want to go grab your sick blanket? You have to get it because oh, oh. my hands are cold. Oh, your hands are cold. Want to help you? Yeah.
Dogs aren't getting congested and angry. Doggy squabbles. Or this, or this illness is that's going around. I don't have a big appetite. Oh, you know what? Do you think it could be that you're uh, What's that? He's gonna have a karma. What, what? Uh, um, like, because you've been like all the. Yeah. The, you think you've I've been, been doing that since November. Well, I know, but you're swallowing it. Like, I've been doing it since November. I don't know why it was in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm.
on, Rio.
Come on, Missy. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on. Go, go, go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Good girl. <laughs>
Yes, Bella. I think some days I'm learning to pin cats, and some days I'm not. When I pick up the cats, then mom, when I was going to the door, I was sneezing like two times. What are you doing? For who? You look very nice in your Anna dress. I will I'll send the person my other sister. Love her Anna. Her up in a little bit when it's time to come down. Yeah. Friday night bedtime.
Oh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
Paris. 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 Paris, are you awake? Paris, come here. Come on, Paris. Here's one. Come on. Well, we can grab you this one time.
I'm going to be ending this journey. I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.